billion pounds, which I guess is about 1.2 um, billion uh, euros or, or so on. How much output and impact does that buy? And that was the question that the UK government asked when the new administration came into office in 2010. They said, the government of the UK spends one billion pounds on communications. What do we get for it? Perfectly reasonable question for democratic politicians to ask. Anyone, any thoughts what the answer might be? I mean, some of you are paid to evaluate the, um, uh, uh, the progress of government communications. So I hope Gore Khan has got an answer, for example. <laughs> no? The sad thing was in 2010, my predecessors couldn't answer this question either. So the government not unreasonably said, well, if you don't know what the impact is of spending a billion pounds, let's try doing it for half that, for 500 million, and see if it changes. <laughs> and so the lack of evaluation and measurement cost about 2,000 people their jobs, cost a lot of agencies good communications contracts because they couldn't prove their worth. So this is a practical professional issue as well as a theoretical um, uh, choice uh, we, 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 we face. Um, you can get practically involved in this. I can announce uh, today that we are about to um, uh, issue what is called uh, uh, very sexily the um, prior information notice for the um, measurement and monitoring of UK government communications. And over the next few days, you'll see on the OGU website the um, intention to procure media monitoring, evaluation, media insights, social media monitoring and analysis will be put out to tender for the UK government and wider public sector. And part of the way we're driving savings in the UK government is to have whole public service contracts rather than just itsy bitsy um, uh, uh, contracts and so on. There'll be a supplier engagement day in July, so those of you who are interested in that, watch the OGU website, talk to me, and you'll see that come through. If you wish to um, uh, uh, go to sleep or pretend you're tweeting about the conference when actually you're looking at some um, uh, uh, social dating site or, or something, uh, I have tweeted what I am going to say, and it's on the screen um, uh, behind you, so you can bluff your way um, uh, through that. This is a practical journey. The small steps point is important. Um, a lot of people who would use and utilise your products and your learning are put off by the fact that they say, but we can't measure the outcomes of um, uh, what we um, uh, uh, do. And it's all too technical, and it's all too theoretical. To which my answer and my learning in embedding evaluation in the UK government communications is to um, uh, say, start small and build up measure the outputs, then have a go at the outtakes before you get to the, the outcomes. And that lesson is often missed by the measurement and evaluation industry because they try and sell a BMW where actually what you need is a Ford Focus to get going as we all um, uh, learn to uh, 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 drive like that. The other side of it is if you do this well, it strengthens the efficiency and effectiveness and reputation of government and other corporate organisations. I will tell you a story. When I was appointed as Director of, of, of Government Communications, does anyone know what a Director of Government Communications does? I you do. No, I was hoping you'd tell me. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I think I do three things. I do communication strategy. The strategy of the UK government, which is a fantastic organisation to work for, which is put in office partly to um, uh, eradicate extreme poverty, partly to stop climate change, partly to defeat terrorism, and to do, do lots of domestic things as, as, as well. And the communications plan I'm going to talk about in a bit. Then I do the management of the um, uh, Number 10 Downing Street and Cabinet Office communications team, which is my management role. And then I'm head of profession. And it's the head of profession bit, I guess, I'm really here for to today to say, as a profession, my role is to raise standards. That's what professionals do in any profession. So my bit is saying, if you can't prove your worth, then you're in the um, uh, uh, wrong um, uh, uh, trade and, and, and so on. Um, what should we talk about next? Um, it's a great job I have. It's a fantastic role. It's hugely um, uh, entertaining, and it's partly thanks to AMEC and colleagues who put together brilliant initiatives like the Barcelona Principles, which underpin our evaluation uh, work. Part of my challenges include making sure we recruit enough soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Part of my challenges for you who are British citizens is trying to get you to lead more healthier lives, to stop you drinking and smoking and eating too much chocolate, which you do. Brits, put your hands up. Hands up. <laughs> Yes, yes, we, yeah, 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 you get who you are. And that's the Change for Life um, uh, 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 campaign. Part of my job, and you'll see this on the slides when you get them, the, the memo um, uh, there, which you can't quite read, but it's a memo from Winston Churchill, sent during the war. And Churchill is arguing 
for brevity in communications because he says it's wartime, we're sending these long memos to one another, we've got to be much shorter and sharper in what we um, uh, do. And a lot of my job is saying, can we be brief? Communications is actually very simple. It's A, B, C. A is for the audience. It's always about the audience, not the organisation, the minister, the permanent secretary, the chief executive. Brevity is the key to effective communication, as we heard from David with his five T's. And C, communication should be a conversation. You know, there's a huge mix up, mix up between people broadcasting stuff and thinking that's communication. It is not. The reason we have two ears and one mouth is because we should communicate in that proportion. And too often, we fail to do so. So put that in your evaluation um, uh, reports. Um, <laughs> Another reason for me um, uh, uh, being here is the British government is a huge beast. It spends about £700 billion pounds a year hoping, help, trying to make people's lives better and easier and, and healthier and so on. £700 billion. Um, pounds. Communications is one of the four main tools that governments the world over can use to improve the lives of their citizens. Legislation, Taxation, regulation, and communication are the four tools that any government has um, in its um, in, in, in its um, uh, work. And so, UK government communications, in order to discharge that duty, does a number of things. We inform um, uh, citizens about their rights and responsibilities. We nudge them to better behaviour. Sometimes we have to shove them to pay their tax returns. But you know, there's an information piece, there's a behaviour change piece, and then there's the promoting um, uh, the country around the world, which is the basics of what um, uh, we do. On this screen is um, uh, the legacy of uh, Barcelona. And I could point to brilliant, brilliant um, uh, campaigns like the Scottish Breast Cancer Campaign, which is um, uh, represented by the, um, uh, one of the um, pictures on the um, screen. That campaign, we know because we've invested in evaluation, saves the lives of 70 women in Scotland each year. And that is what government communications is about. And that is where I am trying to take our evaluation um, uh, work. Some of the other pictures, the um, uh, stroke campaign, FAST um, uh, there, and the Great Britain campaign, Knowledge is Great, are other campaigns where we can demonstrate significant returns um, from what we do. The other pictures on the screen illustrate some of the conversations in the Evaluation Council, across Whitehall and so on, which is to paint a picture of a big organisation, Government Communication Service has 3,000 members coming to terms with the need to evaluate and measure and make that part of their DNA. And we're not there yet, but we're making, I think, um, substantial progress based on um, uh, Barcelona. You've got to evaluate, but the first thing that we have to do and had to do was put in place um, uh, a framework. We call our campaign framework OASIS. And OASIS stands for Objectives, Audience, Strategy, implementation and scoring, because if we said evaluation, it wouldn't be OASIS, it would be OASIS or something. So getting across to my colleagues, those 3,000 government communicators, that all communication should be a campaign and should follow the OASIS framework is the absolute prerequisite of embedding effective evaluation, I think, in any organisation. Um, uh, uh, before I, I, I ran the UK Government Communication Service, I also ran a consultancy, and my job there was to get across to my colleagues that all communication should be a campaign, because it should start with the objective, consider the audience, then run through um, uh, to uh, the results. Starting small, you can also see on that screen one of the monthly dashboards we have brought in to government departments that says every month, what is the media sentiment? What is the quantity? What's going on on social media? This is not the most sophisticated way we could do this, but this is an effective way of making great evaluation part of the DNA of our work, part of changing um, uh, the, 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 the culture. When I was um, uh, first appointed, I um, uh, went to the Civil Service Board, which is a group of important and worthy people. Some of them are important, some of them are worthy, some of them are both. Ministers non-exec directors, people like Lord um, uh, Brown, formerly of BP, and um, permanent secretaries. So there were 10 of them in the room, and I came in to present my report on, in communications. So how many communications experts are there in the room now? Well, you're, you know, into, into measurement and stuff. You should be able to answer this question. One? Well, that's quite a good answer, but actually the people in the room thought they were 11. They all thought they were a communication expert, and they would do, because they're permanent secretaries and ministers. They know lots of stuff. And so we had a debate about the um, uh, future of uh, government communications, particularly around, on that day, internal communications and how we needed to motivate civil servants to work smarter and be more digital and more skilled. 
And there were 11 different views and there was a cacophony and there wasn't really much progress made. What do you do then as a communicator? How do you think, I haven't landed what I needed to. I went away and I did a survey. And I used SurveyMonkey, you know, you will probably have heard of it. Um, uh, and I came back with this survey monkey. We surveyed some civil servants. And the insight from the survey, which is the critical part of any measurement and evaluation, was that civil servants would change and become more unified and skilled and digital, but we had to fix their IT first. And their IT was so 20th century, it was unbelievable. And I tell you that story because in terms of those of you who don't work in big organizations, you must never underestimate the need to actually start small and build up and use simple tools. Because as soon as I brought that survey into that room, we didn't have 11 communication experts anymore. We had one communication expert because the communicator had the evidence and the insight and then could drive the communications forward. And that is not yet embedded sufficiently enough in the private or um, uh, public um, uh, sector. All right, what do I want to achieve um, uh, through uh, all this uh, work? It's on the screen. We are reforming government communications and evaluation is at the heart of it. And what I expect and require is um, uh, strategic leadership from the top people, operational excellence from everyone. And to deliver that, we're investing really, really strongly in capability and um, uh, development. And that program, particularly on the capability, capability and development side, means um, uh, that we have a strong and focused learning program. Over the past year, we've put perhaps um, uh, 800 people through evaluation training. And again, it's what we call sheep dipping. It's just giving everyone um, uh, the basics to say, this is now the culture. This is where you must um, uh, uh, do things. We put on the desk of every um, uh, government communicator our performance framework. And that is the capability and learning point. And these are the principles that you must follow. And this is the way that you measure things. It's a shame in a digital age, although this is available online, that we have to produce things in paper. But it's important enough to put it on the desk and say, this is what you need to do. And you know what? It's not the most sophisticated or brilliant piece of um, uh, advice on evaluation. It's pretty good. But it gets people into the culture of measuring and evaluating, and it creates advocates for measurement and evaluation, where before it was, well, we're just too busy, which is always an excuse in government, because there are things that come through the door every um, uh, uh, day, big things and small things, that um, uh, stop people from doing the evaluation and uh, measurement. On the operational excellence strand of that, we produced a handbook, which is largely available online, which says, as a government communicator, you have to measure. And that is part of the way that you will be judged every um, uh, year. And so we now say that all government communicators have to do four pieces of professional development every year. Do you do professional development? Do you? Yes? The front row do, yes? Back row don't. No, no. Look, government communication service you will not get promoted or you will not be moved sideways into another role unless you can prove and prove that you have done four pieces of professional development each year, including something on digital, something on widening your skills, and something on evaluation. And you can choose the fourth. And the program that Paul and others have put together says it's not just good enough to say you can measure something. You're basically at um, uh, uh, three um, uh, levels. You're at foundation level, you're at practitioner level, or you're at advanced level. And the point of professional development is to move up a level, not down a level or stay at the same level and so on. And this is part of the drive that underpins our move towards um, operational excellence. Then there is government communications uh, plan. Now, you know, there are plans that you use and plans that um, uh, stay on a shelf. And the point of putting this plan together for me to bringing together the 130 main campaigns that the UK government is seeking to deliver over the next year, summarising them as three priorities, building economic uh, confidence, enhancing Britain's um, uh, role in the world, and creating a fairer society, is partly so we can measure progress. And there'll be, there's quarterly reporting behind this, and there is a model for making sure the plan does not just stay on the shelf, but is used and utilised by people um, across government communications. And this gives confidence to our principals, the ministers, and uh, permanent secretaries and chief executives that we know where um, uh, we are um, uh, headed. Um, 
I would just highlight the fact that bringing all this together is um, uh, uh, not entirely an easy task, but the sheer point of planning and finding out what government wants to um, uh, do. We have brilliant campaigns. There's one in London which, uh, where we have a conference uh, this week which is aimed at ending violence and sexual violence against women in conflict. It's a hugely important campaign. You will have seen it, led by Angela Jolie and William Hague, our foreign um, uh, uh, secretary. But that is part of the British influence in the world strand. We also discovered during this planning process that there are some slightly random things that government communicators um, uh, want to do. We have a small campaign that will spend about £7,000 this year to stop people mixing alcohol and seawater. So if you are putting alcohol in your gin or vodka, please stop it. <laughs> the campaign is actually about stopping people swimming after they've had you know, various pints of beer. But nevertheless, that planning process is the underpinning to actually understanding, then summarizing under those three um, uh, umbrella campaigns, and then measuring on a quarterly basis, backed up by the monthly dashboards, um, uh, what we are um, uh, uh, doing. And we have to do all this um, uh, as um, uh, society is, is changing. And part of the drive and underpinning of why I have been able to convince people that evaluation is absolutely critical is to say, look, society is changing. We're moving from a state of deference to a state of reference, where people look to the views of their families and friends rather than the government. It's an extraordinary but true um, uh, fact to finding, I think it was in the Edelman Trust Barometer, that across Europe about 25% of people trust their governments. 25 of us, about a quarter, the people who have been pushed off in the naughty corner there. Um, uh, um, uh, about 60% um, uh, of us will trust the recommendation of a friend online. So if a friend says, buy this product, use this service, we'll trust them. About 40% of us, so sort of that group over there, um, uh, uh, would um, uh, trust the recommendation of a stranger online. So this group are either a bit naive or actually representative of the fact that more people will trust the views of strangers to buy products or services than trust their own governments, which is why we have to work harder to prove our worth and understand how um, we're changing um, uh, things. And of course, the money, and I say this to people who want to transact um, uh, with government, the money, as the former Chief Secretary of the Treasury in the UK famously said, has run out. And we are certainly planning for a period of austerity. We've delivered um, uh, uh, savings year on year in government communications. And as a government communication service, we've committed to 10% savings year on year. Because I think that drive to efficiency also drives better performance and drives better um, uh, uh, measurement. Um, in terms of, um, uh, you know, it's also setting out we're on our journey. And the important thing, the two points I want to make on, on, on this slide. First, that we have a plan from here to 2020 to say this is the way we are going to develop government communications and it's continually reinforcing those messages about measurement and um, evaluation. The other thing we did in an open digital age is that we've been around all our major government departments and we've measured their communications performance. It was a bit of a shock to them because we got in external people, people like um, uh, uh, you, to act as peer reviewers to test the performance of UK government departments. UK Foreign Office, there were 50 separate recommendations about how they could improve their performance, including putting in place an evaluation uh, hub, which they accepted and they're now getting on with, which will support Britain's role in the world and will lead to better communications. Overall, we found that UK government communications was tactically strong but strategically challenged. We handled the media very well day after day at huge volume and so on. What we did not do was plan, measure, and evaluate. And that piece of evidence, those capability reviews, are the underpinning of um, uh, what I'm talking about. So, having told you that story about changing UK government communications and putting measurement and evaluation um, uh, at the center of things, then that is essentially um, uh, where uh, we have got to. We have a business plan. We have training. DOC reference is our direct communications. All our direct communications radically now have a requirement and an objective to prove their worth, to measure and evaluate. Why was it not in there? And how many directors of comms, agency heads, client managers do you know who actually have you know, some vague objectives, but actually very little measurement um, uh, uh, in that? So, and we have the mandatory training and support and, 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 and standards. And this is all to drive towards, I think, again, with, you know, if we're talking about measurement and evaluation in a vacuum, I do fear part of the problem 
with this conference is you're all a bit nice and a bit serious. <laughs> this is the most important communications conference in Europe, but it's all very serious. Perhaps you need to make measurement and an evaluation a bit sexier. Perhaps you need to live a little. I don't know. But nevertheless, there is sometimes a disconnect between the fact that it's absolutely central to our worth and the day-to-day -day, um, uh, business of um, our communications. Um, uh, but in terms of trying to inspire my people, the message is we should be exceptional. And exceptional communications is effective because it is a coherent campaign and it is efficient because it's delivered at least cost to the um, uh, uh, taxpayer. And that goal underpins all that we're doing. You know, practically, I will go around each government department in July, and this is my trust but verify uh, message. We have thir 33 main departments and agencies and 26 of those now have an evaluation hub, which is the graphic that you can see, the picture you can see on the screen, where we've got them to st stick on the wall, not just the comms outputs, the overall reputation scores, the media outputs and, and outtakes, the internal comms staff um, scores, the marketing outputs and, and, and the feedback we get from that, also customer service um, uh, scores. So we can see where, if you take our tax collecting um, department, the HRMC, if we do a big communications um, push to say to people, here's how you pay your tax online, it reduces volumes in the um, uh, tax agency call centres, so there's less cost there, there's more impact, it's communication serving the whole organisation. It's not perfect, but these performance hubs in every department, which are on the wall in every month, allow management teams to have a discussion about where they are. You know, I'd like to move from paper to screens. I'd like to move from monthly dashboards to daily reports. But you do it bit by bit and build on best practice. And communicators, like the story I told you about the Civil Service Board, once they're empowered and once they find the power of numbers, there's no going back. But that professionalizing um, uh, takes um, uh, time. So the risk remains, sustainability, capability, cultures and behaviors. But that's why trust but verify and the role of AMEC and the Barcelona principles remains absolutely um, uh, important and so on. But we have changed. And it was interesting before I came here talking to my director of communication and saying, does it work? We cut spending in half. Is it better? Can we, can, can we measure it? And the answer was yes. We are recruiting more teachers. We are reducing road accent, accidents on much smaller budgets because we think far more carefully now about what we do and how we deploy it and we target our audiences and we measure the impact and, and, and so on. So it is um, uh, changing. So those are the lessons. Um, uh, we are on a journey. I am grateful for Amex support. I hope what I have explained today in terms of this um, uh, story allows you to see how evaluation is used for real in one of the most demanding environments that anyone could ever face. And if any of you haven't worked in, um, uh, in government in whatever country, then do so. Because it may be exciting um, uh, PRing the fonds or widgets or um, uh, body lotions or whatever you do, but it is actually not as worthwhile and not as demanding as the job of saving, improving and enriching lives, which is the heart of public service. And if we have the measurement to prove that, it will not only up the standing of the communications pres uh, profession, but it will validate your work and together, as well, someone uh, once said, we can. Thank you very much. Well, that's an embodiment of what upping the game means. So uh, let me move to uh, questions for Alex. And please wait for the microphones to come to you. Huge journey that um, Alex is on. Question at the back, please. Please remember to say your name. Uh, Philip Lynch from Cantar Media. Alex, thanks very much for a very great, uh, energetic um, presentation. Um, a lot of the campaigns that you highlighted are aimed at driving a behavioral change. Yeah. How do you then take your outputs and validate them for, 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 for what they have delivered in yeah. terms of behavioral change? Yeah, yeah. I am very clear with the people that I, I, I work for me and I work for them as head of profession that all communications at some level should be about behavior change. I'm not interested in the awareness piece or the understanding piece. I want to know what changed, because unless practically you can nail that thought in the head of a communicator, a marketeer, or a PR person, 
then they tend to do, you know, there are two types of communication in the world. There's OASIS, which I told you about, and then there's SOS communications. Does anyone know what SOS stands for in communication terms? Send out stuff. Send out stuff, precisely, thank you, right? And without that focus on behaviour change, um, it, 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 it doesn't work. Moving towards those metrics and showing what behaviour we changed is difficult. You saw from the dashboard. On the dashboard, we can do sentiment, we can do output and so on. But I'm trying to drive people towards that behaviour change and I can sh demonstrate it in recruiting teachers, in road accidents, some of the stuff that goes to the evaluation council, which Bagnall, if he was listening to me, would um, uh, uh, tell you about. But it does take time. Does that answer your point? At least partially? Um, yeah, no, no, it does. I've just got a very quick ancillary question B, yeah. if I may, yeah. which is, Alex, could you give us a, a sense of where, where the government sits around the efficacy of PR and paid-for advertising? Yeah, we are a, um, a PR-led communications service because I want effective and efficient communications, so I'm always going to look at how we can deliver those things through the most cost-effective channels first. Now, Change for Life demonstrably improves people's lives, and that requires big um, uh, advertising uh, campaigns, digital and traditional and, and, and so on, so we will always look to those tools. But in terms of the communications toolbox, I want us to be PR-led. Much of our stuff um, uh, uh, is, um, but you know, that's where we start. Next question for Alex. We have one down here, please. Alex, as you've been on this journey, um, and you know, you're know you instituting a change in how communications is done and measured yeah. across a lot of different agencies yeah. and a lot of different government functions, um, what are some of the places it's been easiest and what are the, some of the places that it's, it's proven more difficult? It's a good question, and the answer um, uh, is if we, some of the um, uh, campaigns that we um, put in the government communications uh, plan, there's a very good little campaign on dog chipping, putting microchips in dogs so they don't get um, uh, lost, where the um, uh, team at uh, DEFRA, which Elaine is, is, is part of, can show you the outcome. Then there's the biggest single campaign we do, which is the Great Britain campaign, which um, uh, there are 50 great events every month all around the globe. It's designed to bring trade, investment and tourism to the UK. And we can show £600 million pounds worth of benefit. It's evaluated three times, an internal evaluation, National Audit Office evaluation, and HM Treasury um, evaluation. So those are two great examples. And then of those 130 campaigns I mentioned, half have pretty average um, uh, evaluation. But this is the culture change, David, that I'm trying to embed, that you know, perhaps about half of, do we think, Paul, about half of our people have latched onto it and half still perhaps need a bit of nudging? Indeed. Yeah. Some yeah, yeah. So it's the people who will evaluate, and I can give them all the tools, I can give them <laughs> the performance frameworks and so on, but we need to, um, uh, we need to drive it through the whole organisation. But there are some great examples of the biggest campaigns. Thank you. We need to pause it there. I um, want to say one more thing, yeah, if I course. may, um, yeah. uh, which is in, 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 in closing. Thank you for, for, for listening and thank you for your questions. But can I invite you to join the UK Government Communications Service? We are a global organisation. We have members in um, uh, Mongolia and Thailand and Brunei who are locally employed government communicators who work for the UK Diplomatic Service and so on. You can join by pressing a button, and I'm sure you're all capable of doing um, uh, that if you go to the GCS website. You can sign up as an affiliate member. It doesn't require anything of you, but it does mean that you'll get the news updates and be told what's going on and see the best practice. For those of you who are UK taxpayers, this is paid for using your money, so you can you know, test whether we're delivering it. But more substantially, we have a network of peer reviewers who help us, like Richard, make government communications better. So you can be part of that. And if that doesn't appeal to you, then use our digital assessment tool and take the test. We have for our government communicators a self-assessment tool about how good they are at digital. I got 77%, which I was really pleased with, until I was told the pass rate was 80%. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.